Hello and welcome. This is the CircuitPython Weekly Meeting for October 10th, 2023. This is the time of the week uh, where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. Uh, I'm Scott and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. Uh, if you don't know, CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython-dev text channel along with the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting is typ typically happens uh, at, on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday like it did yesterday. Uh, so today is Tuesday. Uh, in the notes talk, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you'd like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to this at CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There's a notes docu document to accompany the meeting and recording. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to skip around and view parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 45 to 60 minutes, although we have a small crew today, so I bet it'll be less than that. Uh, after each meeting, we post a link to the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pins messages to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can always leave hug reports and status updates uh, and in the weeds in the notes document to, for us to read during the meeting. So. This meeting is held in five parts. The first is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a chosen set of items from our Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. The second part is the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. It's a quantitative overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers separate from our status updates. The third part is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. Uh, fourth part is Status Updates. Status Updates is an opportunity to report on what you've been up to. Take a couple minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week. Uh, the fifth and final part is In the Weeds. It, it is an opportunity for more long-form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. And that covers how the meeting will go. And with that, I will do our first section, uh, community news, after I take a time code. So community news is a, a glimmer slash glimpse of our Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Uh, the first item here in the lead story in uh, this week's newsletter that goes out on Mondays uh, is the release of MicroPython 1.21. Uh, MicroPython 1.21 was released Friday with significant changes since the 120 release last April. Uh, a few of the highlights are built-in modules, uh, remove the U prefix, uh, except if uh, the module is not compatible with the CPython version. This is something CircuitPython's done quite a while, so it, it's awesome to see MicroPython do it. Uh, the port, uh, uh, the ESP32 port in MicroPython uses IDF5. Uh, support, support has been added for BLE on the Raspberry Pi Pico W boards. Importing has been tweaked and optimized. Conversion specifiers and F strings are supported. Uh, ESP8266 and the ESP32 ports add support for the ESP Now protocol. There is now an extensive LoRa module and much more. And I will just like to point out, there's also the ESP32 port uh, now has dynamic heap, MicroPython heap that grows as needed, which I am very excited about. <laughs> All of this uh, new stuff has been added without a performance hit since the previous release. So congrats to the MicroPython team. Uh, next up, we're in a release frenzy. Uh, Python 3.12 has been released. Um, so this is what uh, you, if you need to be more specific about Python, you would call C Python uh, because it is also implemented in C. Uh, Python 3.12 final uh, is out now. Uh, new features here, more flexible f-string parsing, allowing many things previously disallowed. 
Uh, support for the protocol or the buffer protocol in Python code, a new debugging slash profiling API, uh, which I'll note is not supported in MicroPython or CircuitPython. Uh, CPython supports uh, now supports isolated sub interpreters with separate global interpreter locks. Uh, this is great if Python is embedded by multiple like libraries in a C program. Uh, Python has even more, more improved error messages. More exceptions potentially caused by typos now make suggestions to the user. Uh, they've added support for the Linux perf profiler to report Python function names in traces, and many large and small performance improvements, uh, such as PEP 709 and support for the Bolt binary optimizer, delivering an estimated 5% overall performance improvement. Uh, in addition to 3.12, the PSF has also announced that 3.11.6 is available as well. And I assume that's a, a bug fix release of the 3.11 series. Uh, two more items here in community news. Uh, first, we have the Open Hardware Summit for 2024. Uh, the Open Hardware Summit is the annual conference organized by the Open Source Hardware Association a 501c3 not-for-profit charity. It is the world's first comprehensive conference on open hardware, a venue and community to discuss and draw attention to the rapidly growing open source hardware movement. Speakers include world-renowned leaders from industry, academia, the arts, and maker community. Talks cover a wide range of subjects from electronics, mechanics, to related fields such as digital fabrication, fashion technology, self-quantification devices, and IP law. As a microcosm of the open source hardware community, the summit provides an annual friendly forum for the community. Uh, tentative dates are April 26th and 27th. Live stream and remote talks will be permitted. Uh, Oshawa, the, the organization, is officially on the prowl for wonderful talks, workshops, and exhibitions for the Open Hardware Summit in Montreal. Uh, fill out the call for proposals form and toss your hat in the ring to make uh, the Open Hardware Summit 2024, extra cool and fun. Uh, and there's a link to the proposal form. All right. Uh, last up for the news is uh, more of a reminder. Uh, Hacktoberfest 10 is here. This year marks the 10th anniversary of Hacktoberfest. It's grown from 676 participants in 2014 to nearly 147,000 folks. Um, I'm going to skip a little bit of this. Uh, as in previous years, CircuitPython will be participating in Hacktoberfest, marking some pull requests as Hacktober eligible. Um, the current list of issues is available at circuitpython.org slash contributing. Uh, you can look for Hacktoberfest, and uh, there's more info there to a link to a blog post. Um, and I'll say that if you do want to work on something and you don't find the Hacktoberfest label, uh, feel free to ping me or someone else on CircuitPython dev channel. Uh, we're happy to add that if that's what you want to do for Hacktoberfest. We want to make sure that any changes that you want to do in CircuitPython land uh, apply if that's your intent. Um, the main thing that, that you need that label is that sometimes you'll get bad junk uh, PRs, so that, that's why that's there. But we're happy to make sure that you get uh, credit where credit is due, uh, but note that uh, the reward system no longer includes t-shirts. Uh, it's only virtual rewards this year. Uh, which simplifies things on their end greatly. All right. Uh, next up, uh, newsletter details. So uh, the CircuitPython Weekly Newsletter is a CircuitPython community-run newsletter emailed every Monday. The complete archives are available at adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. It highlights the latest Python on hardware-related news from around the web, including Python, CircuitPython, and MicroPython developments. Uh, to contribute your own news or project, uh, you can edit the next week's draft on GitHub. It's github.com slash adafruit slash circuitpython dash weekly dash newsletter. Look for the drafts folder and submit a pull request. Uh, or you may tag your tweet uh, with hashtag circuitpython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com directly. That's community news. Next up, we have the state of circuitpython libraries in Blinka. Uh, this is a kind of objective view of the health of the project and the subparts of CircuitPython. Uh, the report contains information from the previous seven days, uh, but anything done today is not included in the report. And uh, in particular, I pulled uh, Monday's report. So 
this does not include Monday activity or Tuesday activity uh, since we're doing this meeting on a Tuesday. The reason to do that is that next week's report will have this stuff. So um, as of like Sunday night-ish, I forget what time it actually runs. Um, let's do overall. Overall, we had 17 pull requests merged from 15 different authors, which is awesome. Um, some newer folks to me are John P789, um, Terthargenta, I'm, I'm sorry, I butchered it, I'm sure, uh, is a, a, a rare name. Lint Smitka is a new name. Scilabs Bella5 is a, is a new name. Hey, Gowry is new. Tristan Warder uh, are all new folks. Andy Bing, I think, is a pretty regular contributor as well. So thank you to all those folks, and thank you to the five reviewers, uh, including, uh, yeah, the five reviewers for that. Um, we have 10 closed issues by three people and nine open by eight people, so we're net down one, which is great. And uh, zero issues were assigned to Hacktoberfest label. So I'm not sure stuff is actually labeled Hacktoberfest, but um, if you find something, feel free to work on it, and we'll make sure it gets counted. All right, next up, let's go into a little bit more detail for the core. Uh, this is like the C uh, core that under, undergirds the Python on the microcontroller itself. Uh, for the core, we had 12 pull requests merged from 10 different authors, so a lot of folks here as well. Uh, we had three reviewers, uh, myself, Dan, and Mark. Uh, we had 21 open pull requests, so we're uh, comfortably under the 25 open pull request single page mark that I kind of like. Uh, to go by. In fact, we have uh, four of these were open zero days ago, so these are new stuff that hopefully got merged in already uh, since these stats were taken. Issues-wise, we had four closed issues by two people and one open by one person, so we're net down one as well. Uh, we have a total of 724 open issues, uh, and we triage those. We have two that were not assigned a milestone when these stats were run, and we have um, milestones are used for Adafruit-funded folks to prioritize the work that they're going to do. Uh, kind of like dictated by when we're hoping to fix things and get them released. We have 12 open issues for 8.2x, which is our, our current stable branch, uh, but is not getting a whole lot of work except bug fixes. And then our next uh, major release will be 9.0, and it has 53 open issues. Uh, so we'll, I'll get to triaging those things as well this week. And with that, uh, I'm going to see if Foamy Guy is able to do the stats for the libraries. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Scott. Uh, for the libraries this week, we had five pull requests merged. Uh, let me also mention this covers all of the Python level libraries. Those are going to be all the repos that start with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then whatever the name of the library is. Uh, these are typically either drivers that allow you to interface with certain pieces of hardware, or they are helper libraries that allow you to uh, kind of have easier access, some high-level functions that make it easy to interact with different services or do different things. Uh, so across those libraries, we did have five pull requests merged. Uh, those five pull requests were authored by four different uh, authors. Uh, of those, the name that was new to me that stood out uh, was Tristan Warder. So uh, that person may be new or less frequent contributor. So thanks to them, but uh, also thanks to Tyeth, myself, uh, Maker Melissa, um, as authors as well, uh, even though they are more frequent. Uh, we had two reviewers, uh, myself and Scott. So thank you to those folks. And then on our uh, pull request, the oldest one merged this week was 117 days old, and the newest one was just a single day, so we got some brand new ones in as well this week. That leaves us with 44 pull requests open. Uh, we had four issues closed by two people and seven new issues open by six people. Uh, we do have no Hacktoberfest labels on the issues themselves, but I was doing some looking into uh, that this week, and the uh, we have the labels on the repos uh, or tags, potentially. I'm not sure if they're actually called labels when they're on the repo. Um, but as far as I know, all the libraries are tagged or, or labeled with Hacktoberfest, which makes all the issues and all the PRs that occur inside those libraries count. Uh, but like Scott said, uh, if you are working on something and want to make sure it's going to count, uh, you can always ping uh, somebody or mention it in the CircuitPython dev channel, uh, and one of us can add the, the separate label uh, to be more explicit on it. Uh, but I think we are all good to go there. 
Um, we do have across all of those libraries, 649 open issues, of which there are 19 of them labeled as good first issues, which you can find by going to circuitpython.org slash contributing. On that page, there is a list of all the open PRs. There are also some tabs that you can click to find the open issues. And on the issues page, there is a drop down to filter by a uh, good first issue, as well as the other possible uh, tags that are put on the issues. Uh, rounding it out in libraries, we have the PyPy stats. Uh, for the last seven days, we had 118,178 PyPy downloads uh, over the 313 libraries that are published there. The top 10 list is uh, in the notes. If you want to check that out, it looks more or less like the usual suspects towards the top of that list. Uh, there is also a list of libraries that were updated in the last seven days, and the uh, one that I'll mention there is the new one in the community bundle, which is the AT24 Mac EEPROM uh, library. So check that one out if you are looking for a way to store some data. Um, and that's what we've got for the libraries. Thank you, Foamy Guy. Okay, next up, let's have a Blinka update from Maker Melissa. Hello, so this uh, past week we had two pull requests merged by two authors, that'd be myself and John P789. Uh, and there were two reviewers, that would be Scott and myself. Uh, that leaves a net uh, total of five open pull requests amongst all the repositories. Um, there were two closed issues by one person and one open by one person. Um, it says there were our zero Oktoberfest labels assigned, but like Foamy Guy had said, um, they're attached to the repos and not the issues. Um, there were 9,690 PyPI downloads in the last week, 2,891 PyWheels downloads in the last month, and we are at 121 boards. That's it. Thank you, Melissa. Okay, next up is Hug Reports. This is a chance to, for us to give folks a shout out and thank them for work they're doing within the community. Um, it's also a great way for us to just know uh, what we value as a community and reinforce that. So I will start, uh, oh, I should say this done as a round robin. So I will start and then we'll go through a list of the folks in the notes doc. If you're not listed in the notes doc, I, uh, I'll just won't go to you. That's a, a hangover from how we used to do it. Uh, and I'll read all of the text only folks as well. So. Uh, first up, I will go myself. I just wanted to say a huge thank you to Maker Melissa for improving Blinka's display I.O. implementation uh, to support grayscale OLEDs and e-paper displays, uh, basically porting a lot of the code that I wrote for CircuitPython C into Python. So I really appreciate that. That's super cool. Uh, people have come to expect portability in CircuitPython land, and I'm super happy to see that apply to inks and grayscale. So thank you for doing that work. I know it's uh, kind of a big ball of code. <laughs> uh, and then also a hug report to MicroPython team for releasing uh, 121. Um, all right, next up we have a uh, text from C. Grover. Uh, C. Grover says, hug to Toddbot for urging me to learn and apply Python list comprehension. The technique was particularly magical when summing the square of differences for a multi-channel multi spectrometer sensor project. Didn't know what I was missing. I report to John Park for his support, patience, and creative insights as I labored over iterations of the spectrometer sensor code. And lastly, a hug report to Deshipu for the BNO0559 DOS sensor library. There are some advanced, for me, driver coding examples in there that got my attention while a whilst attempting to understand sensor internals. Next up, David has a hug report for C. Grover for a lot of great playground posts uh, at adafruit-playground.com slash u slash C. Grover. Um, for those of you who are unaware, uh, Adafruit Playground is a kind of like lower bar post what you're working on sort of uh, community site. Uh, also separate from Adafruit.com for the same reason as the Adafruit newsletter. Um, it uses, it's built upon a lot of the editor for learn. So it's a great way to learn uh, or see behind the curtain for learn guide editing as well. 
Uh, next up is a text from DJ Devin three, uh, who has a hug for Foamy Guy for a very pleasant Saturday morning stream, a hug to Toddbot for a neat YouTube video demos for his of his Pico Touch synth, uh, hug report to C Grover for continual code examples for audio and display I/O related projects. Hug to Blitz City DIY for an amazing sports scoreboard project that I will likely continue to give year after year for sports fans. And now that we're in football season, I really want to try it out. Hug to CircuitPython developers for all their hard work on the ESP IDF and MicroPython merges. And a group hug. All right, next up, we have a note from ADCC, who has a group hug for everyone. Next up is Foamy Guy. All right, thank you, Scott. Uh, hug report uh, echoing what you mentioned before. Hug report for Micro Melissa for all the improvements in Blinka Display IO. Uh, it's really cool to see all the different types of screens and things getting support and all of the newer um, changes to the Display IO API getting brought in. So uh, really, really cool. Um, on board with that. Uh, so thanks to Micro Melissa. And then uh, just a hug report for uh, everybody this week. Thanks. Thanks, Foamy Guy. All right, next up is Maker Melissa. I just wanted to give a hug to Jeff for doing a lot of the technical setup for the Qualia product guide, which made it a lot easier. Uh, hug to Blitz City DIY for helping me uh, make my first fritz fritzing part and a group hug to Varnos. Thanks, Melissa. All right, now that is hug reports. Next up is status updates. Uh, we do this as a round robin as well. Um, I will read the text only folks. Um, and this is a chance for you to say what you've been working on and what you plan on working on in the coming week. It's great for coordinating and collaborating the work that's done in CircuitPython land. Uh, it's also very cool to see just everything, all the different things that people are working on. Uh, so for myself, uh, it's a bit of an off and on week because my partner is out of town on vacation. Very excited for her. Uh, so I'm solo parenting uh, and I'm going over to my uh, parents' house at the end of the week. So I'll be a little bit off and on um, doing all that. Um, I, I think at the start of last week, I sketched out the memory allocation changes. I think I mentioned this last week, but the idea being that we switched to the auto heap growth that was added in MicroPython 121, and we do it for all our ports. Uh, that's gonna really, and it, it's gonna really simplify any time that we wanna allocate, but not within MicroPython, even though MicroPython is running, uh, particularly for displays. Uh, we see this a lot. So. Uh, I linked to the intermediate changes there, but we really need uh, MicroPython, uh, the MicroPython 121 merge to, to finish it all up. Um, so it looks good. Uh, in that vein, I'm working on the MicroPython 120 merge with Dan. Uh, I focused last week on getting the CI going um, so that we could build all the boards and see where we're at. Um, Dan did a lot of work over the weekend, I think. I'm not fully caught up, but uh, did a lot of work over the weekend. So my plan is to rebase and see where we're at and go from there. Um, and hopefully he'll feel like doing 121 after 120. <laughs> I haven't talked to him about that yet. Uh, although I could do it as well. So yeah, I'm uh, fully in MicroPython merge land along with Dan for, for the time being. Uh, next up, I'll read off uh, notes from C. Grover. Try to take a time code. Uh, C. Grover says, finish the code portion of the AS7341 spectrometer sensor-based TV backlight. The project illuminates the wall behind the TV display with a color that matches what the sensor sees near the edge of the screen. Uh, the next step is to build a camouflaged enclosure and vertical mounting wands for the NeoPixel strips. And there's an Adafruit playground link there. Thank you, C. Grover. Uh, expecting a perfect purple PCBs to arrive later this week for the PCM... 510XA I2S Stereo DAC project. The pinout of the PCM 510XA board will match that of the Max 98357A, a 3 watt I2S mono amplifier breakout, so that it can be used as a direct replacement or stacked in parallel to provide a sim simultaneous stereo line output. The PCM 510XA is a modern in stock replacement for the Adafruit. Uh, UDA 1334 I2S DAC breakout that was discontinued after the chip was retired. 
Uh, next up, we have notes from David Glaub, who says, I should take a time code. Uh, it says, mostly non CircuitPython work on the Teddy Ruxpin. Uh, CircuitPython trying to enable slash disable the USB A of the Feather USB host. Uh, works in 8.2.6 but fails in 9x um, with a value error that the pin is in use. Uh, the goal is to turn off eyes and close mouth of 10A Ruxpin uh, when USB is enabled slash connected and goes into the idle sequence when the USB is disabled slash disconnected. Interesting that it's in use. Uh, all right, uh, please file an issue for that. Next up, uh, we have notes from DJ Devin 3 who also tells me to take a time code. <laughs> uh, DJ Devin 3 says, helped in Discord a little. I uh, cleaned three carburetors for a generator, chainsaw, and car engine, house maintenance, and repair projects. Almost got to pet a skunk by accident and having, good, uh, having a good time with family. Uh, oof. Getting close to a skunk. Sounds a little scary to me. Uh, next up, uh, I have notes from ADCC. Uh, who says, uh, continuing uh, adding uh, RP2 BLEIO support um, and also building macOS user agent that sets no async flag on removable device mounts to work around the Sonoma data corruption slash delay issue number 8449 plus general non circuit Python related delayed write problems introduced by Sonoma. Apple may take a long time to fix this. And let's go to Foamy Guy for their update. All right, thank you, Scott. Um, last week, I worked on adding some props and more flexibility for selecting the tag and the titles for the uh, automated release tool inside of Adabot. Uh, I worked on some testing and reviews of library PRs over the weekend. Um, the primary ones are the ADT7410 sensor rewrite, as well as some new examples in the HTTP server and the LIS 3MDL sensor libraries. Um, I also tried out the new Blinka Display I.O. with Pygame Display uh, and started working on the changes to get that back to working. I have made a little bit of progress, but it's not functional quite yet, uh, so I got some work to do on that this week as well. Um, I will also this week look into CircuitPython uh, org bundle is not building, I think, or maybe just hasn't built in a long time. Uh, I got to figure that out and see if there's something weird going on with that uh, bundle repo. It may just be out of date, truthfully, um, in its actions or something like that, but uh, I'll dive into that this week. Um, I will be on deep dive uh, filling in on Friday, so uh, if folks are interested at the normal time on Friday, I'll be around streaming some CircuitPython stuff. And then uh, the only other thing I had, uh, which was mentioned actually in the Discord, I think sometime over the weekend and caught my eye was uh, somebody brought up the idea of integrating Blinka with uh, Minecraft. So potentially like where my mind went to is you could have a digital in-out object that uh, instead of having connection to a hardware pin would actually have a connection inside Minecraft to some uh, redstone. Um, circuitry, which I think would be pretty cool to be able to run CircuitPython code, but have it hmm. do stuff inside Minecraft. Um, so I think I'll dig a little bit in that direction this week as well. Uh, and that's what I've got. Cool. Sounds interesting. Thank you, Foamy Guy, and thanks for uh, covering me for Deep Dive this week. All right. Last up, we have Maker Melissa. Hello. Uh, so last week, I wrote the Qualia RGB666 product guide. And I also created my first fritzing part. Um, this week I will add the bar display to the Qualia RGB666 guide and work on the on some GitHub issues and test out um, more displays of Blinka Display I/O, such as the Pimeroni P hats and W hat displays. Um, and I'll likely do some guide updates as well. And that's it. All right. Thank you, Melissa. That's it for status updates. Last uh, section of the day is in the weeds. Uh, this is a chance for us to talk any or have any longer form discussions. Um, and uh, we have one in the notes doc, so I will hand it over to Fumi Guy. 
Yeah, thank you. This was from uh, one we actually discussed a few weeks back about this template engine that kind of goes along with HTTP server, um, but we split it out. Uh, Michael Pocusa and I have been working on this the last couple of weeks. We split it out to a separate library since that server is getting rather large and since this could be used um, separately. Um, I think it's pretty much ready to go for a release, but I don't know. I don't think I have the rights to create the repo uh, and or I don't know if there's some process for moving the ownership over um, to Adafruit org. So I was looking to see if anybody could help with that or if there's documentation for it somewhere to point me towards. Uh, I can make it if we need to make it, but um, it is usually possible to transfer ownership, but I don't know if you need to be a member, but I think you're a member anyway. So under the settings, there's like destructive actions and transfer is usually one of those. Okay, um, let me check in there. Yeah, so that, yeah, I know I can do that, but I have, I probably have more rights than you in the Adafruit org. Yeah, it does have transfer, it does, um, yeah, so it does have a transfer. Um, it does not let me choose Adafruit. Okay. It says insufficient permission. Okay, so we get, I could either make a new repo or maybe if you gave me full access, maybe I'd be able to transfer it. Um, uh, okay. yeah, whatever is easiest, I'm cool with. You know, or I, you know, I can just make it because you could still push the whole Git history. It would just yep. be a different remote. Yeah, we might as well do that. And then it'll be a, tr a bit tricky for you to then fork that. That's okay. I can but. just, I can remove this one so that I can fork it back to the same name. Yeah, that'll be all right. Yeah. You should be able, yeah. Yeah, it makes it a little tricky, but I think, like, we could also, like, I could have the Adafruit account fork yours, but that will be a little weird for you to work on it some more. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, I would uh, prefer the other way, only if just because I'm lazy and I sometimes search Google for... <laughs> Uh, libraries and a, there are a few libraries that were created that way where I have made yep. it to the one it was forked from and that is like forever etched in my history yeah okay so I, I will uh, right after this meeting I'll coordinate with you and I'll just make a new repo and then you should be able to push your changes cool. to it um, and I can even give you like rights to it in case you cool. need more rights to that temporarily to do that excellent I appreciate it cool uh, yeah, and thanks for working on the template engine. Yeah, definitely. All right, that's it for In the Weeds, and that's it for the newsletter. Let me switch. All right, let me take a time code for wrap-up, and then I will um, read the, the footer of the meeting. Uh, just the reminders. Um, this has been the CircuitPython Weekly for October 10th, 2023. Thank you to everyone who participated on this Tuesday. Uh, if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, considering purchasing hardware from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. Uh, if you want to support MicroPython, uh, you could always do that through GitHub sponsors as well. Uh, they do a great job at annotating the work that is funded by that. Uh, the video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. Uh, it will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to that. Uh, the next meeting, I believe, is Monday, but let me just triple check. Um, yep, it looks like it'll be next Monday at the normal 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, 11 a.m. Pacific. Um, this meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord server, which you can join by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. Um, and to be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the Circuit Pythonistas role on Discord. That we uh, have a great week. We'll see you on Discord, and we'll see you in this meeting all next week. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>